بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone, my name is Fahad Ghadi. I'm the head of sales and marketing and business development at Saudi Academy. And I'm very privileged to be your host tonight for a most important topic. Vision 2030 is the real game changer and disruptor. Projects are not considered successful anymore if they finish on time, on budget, and provide the required quality of its outputs or deliverable. We are looking for outcomes, results, positive change in capabilities realized benefit, sustained impact that lead to realized strategies. Only by focusing on benefits on everything we do, we can realize our vision. And this raised new challenges and at the end, at the need to understand what benefits are, how to realize them and by whom. Therefore, the topic on how do high performance organizations starts with the end in mind, which is one of the seven domains of the roadmap to realize sustainable benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome our strategic partner and APMG authorized training organization for managing benefits advisors. In order to provide the needed knowledge transfer for the most advanced and needed frameworks for realizing Vision 2030. Saudi Academy collaborated with advisors to bring the niche topic of benefits, governance, strategies, implementation, knowledge management, big data, organizational excellence, and others. This is the first of four executive webinars aiming to spread the awareness on these important topics. We will announce a one-time course offered in person at Riyadh on each of these niche topics at the end. Dr. Saadi will provide a presentation starting with the end in mind, followed by a case study for the PMOG PMO winner of the year 2023. Sobul is a Saudi postal and logistics company, which we are very proud of. Imagine number one in the whole world of PMOs is Saudi. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Saadi Adra, founder of Advisors Group and our dear partner. Go ahead, Dr. Okay. Saadi. Thank you, Akhfad. Shukran, shukran jazeelan. Al muqaddim al jamili. I will start with a presentation that speaks about the end in mind, the topic I'm kallam anu will benefit, uh, which will take maybe 25 minutes. Then uh, I will present the civil case study. Uh, not alone. What I will present will be in the form of a dialogue. Yani ana had, I'm, I'm going to highlight certain aspects. Then we will be do doing the discussion then we are privileged to have with us Al-Akh Faisal Al-Arfaj, who is GM of, uh, of Excellence and, and Project Management at, uh, at Sibyl. Uh, and uh, we will be conducting a very nice discussion about what they did in managing, realizing, achieving sustainable benefit which got them to win an international award. Uh, well, not any international award, the number one PMO in the world, and we are very, very proud of that, is, is, is civil for the year 2023 by P PMOGA, PMO Global Alliance, which is now part of, of PMI. So this is the plan. Let's start. I'm going to uh, start by sharing my presentation. So, our topic today is uh, how do high performance organizations start with the end in mind and the road back to realizing sustainable benefits? Or in Arabic, how do the organizations the and the benefits from the the So, uh, um, I think you, you, most of you know about me. I'm going to spend time on, on, on this. And these are our partners in over 12 different uh, countries uh, in the world. So let's start with, first of all, talk what, what are benefits very quickly. And for this, actually, I borrowed a presentation from a colleague from Europe because I found it very interesting, very easy to just introduce the concept of, of benefits, some slides in the beginning. And uh, uh, introducing benefits 
through one example. There is a, a certain location, a city, for example, and they have polluted air, uh, a lot of pollution. And because of the pollution, the health deteriorates. And because the health deteriorates, people start moving away from that area. And because they move away from the area, what happens is that the, the prices drop down. So a prime location now has price drop down and people do not want to go there because of the high pollution. And this affects the, the income from that area and its contribution to the GDP. Uh, so uh, the people in charge came and said, okay, let's do something about it. So what is their objective? Their objective is to uh, strategically uh, reshape or re-enhance the economic situation in that area and its contribution to the, to the country and the prices of, of the, uh, uh, like the apartments, houses and offices there for them to go back to the normal and for the health of, of the people. So to do that, uh, someone suggested, let's uh, install a, an air quality facility. It's a plant that, that takes in the polluted air and produces clean air. Now, what are the outputs when they build this, this facility? They have, if you like, a high-level WBS, air filtering equipment, and some hazardous material containment system to contain all the pollution, and a manner to dispose uh, this uh, polluted uh, material. Uh, so this is what happens when you want, want to build it. You are talking about three things, about the facility itself, about the how to get rid of, of the pollution. But what about the outcomes, the reason? Why did we establish this uh, plant to reduce the hazardous uh, material in the air and the harmful effect and have improved visibility. But is this the final benefit? No, as we mentioned in the beginning, the benefits are fewer health problems, are more attractive place to live, improved image, greater confidence that the government has the ability to solve problems. And these are actual benefits. This is how top management thinks. This is how official think. They th don't think about the technical aspects. They think about the end benefits because these benefits are actually realizations for strategies that are set that have KPI. So uh, if you look at it, we have a project and the project provides an output, which is the air filtering equipment. Then the outcome, when, when this equipment, when this plant starts to work, what it produces is lesser emissions, uh, and more better air, okay, and better air quality. And the end benefit is what? Fewer health problems. But beware, because fewer health problems will not occur immediately. It will require sometimes years for people to uh, get rid of the... Uh, 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 of the uh, issues they, they had before. Now, uh, the problem is that how do you measure the reduced emissions? And then, of course, how do you measure the benefit itself? Because while we are building the factory, it's easy to, to measure. The cost is 100 million. Uh, the duration to build it is two years. Uh, the, the quality inspections should be one, two, three, four. So all these are measured while producing the plant itself. But after that, does the plant provide the amount of redu reduced uh, emissions? And how, how do we measure it? We need to take air samples. And for that, we need to have a data archive for air samples. And we need to be able to do statistics and look at the trend analysis of the air samples. And all these things, if we don't think, start thinking with the end in mind, uh, they are not the responsibility of the project manager to think about them, because this is the responsibility of the operator. Hence, we can only know that we have to have uh, air samples and the needed, uh, uh, if you like, collection, uh, 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 data collection for these air and analysis equipment, like, uh, like in labs or whatever, and the needed statistical control or statistical analysis software and the training on all these all the, these this is a different discipline than the plant itself 
it has to be there. We have to think about it before building the plant. Uh, so to move on, how to measure the fewer health problems, it's a different dimension. We have to probably work with the public health. We need to get surveys in the environment. We need to do data collection, and we need to look at trend analysis. Hence, if we want to start at the end with the end in mind and actually realize benefits, it is not enough just to build the factory as a technical uh, uh, equipment or, or uh, uh, project. We as well need to identify the stakeholders who will be affected. Those we, we need their contribution in order for us to realize the end benefit. And we identify here maybe somebody in the Ministry of Health or some health organization, and maybe somebody in the Ministry of Environmental Things. And, and uh, so that each one would get the needed sensors and training and provide the data. Only then we can claim that we are realizing the, the benefit, which means that the, the air quality project uh, uh, would have traditionally in the WBS, you have the emission control system or the, the whole plant. You do manage the project, which is a WBS pack package we, 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 we always do, but also we need what is called outcome enablers. We need to add something to the WBS, which is called outcome enablers, something that actually helps the operator to move from a deliverable to a realized benefit. And these things, we have to, to build them now while building the project, training the people, developing the standard operating procedure ma manual, training, training them, enabling them, with all the, the needed technical aspects from different entities, so that when we hand over, we don't just hand over a plant, we hand over a system that includes the work of the environmental and the work of, of health. Now, this is just a, a very beautiful and easy to, to spot example, which really identifies the relationship between output outcome and benefit. Our topic today is about the benefit itself. But this example showed the benefit from a single project. Our approach is a little bit dif different. It's not bottom up, it's top down. It's about the benefit from an organizational perspective. So when we talk about, about this, uh, we refer to the standard and the world managing benefit by Stephen Jenner. Uh, this is the 2014, but this year, 2024, it is about to be released or released already. Now is the due time, maybe in September, uh, for the uh, latest uh, revision for this standard. It is a standard by APMG International. APMG, if you don't know about them, they are an accreditation company. They are not a networking organization like PMI or, or IPMA or APM in UK. Uh, they, they just accredit uh, uh, content trainers and uh, uh, courses, workshops and exams. Uh, for example, the World Bank uh, worked with them, trusted them for the public-private partnership. They provide the training, the certification, the exam and, and the, the needed support. Now, within managing benefits, we have seven, seven main pillars of managing benefit. And with respect to managing benefit, I always like to start with this uh, cartoon uh, that uh, uh, Mariam, the doctor, comes out of the operating room and speaks to Hamza and tells him, good news, the surgery was successful. Bad news, we lost the patient. And we, we often see this, that a project by itself can be successful. Like if you look at that plant and we realize that we built the plant according on budget, on time, according to the needed quality inspection or quality control, Nobody can blame the project manager, but if you do not identify anything regarding environmental or anything regarding health and the collaboration and the enablers that are required, probably not much will happen to that plant or no evidence of what that plant contributed to the actual strategy or the actual cause to provide a, a real sustainable impact. And uh, we face this very often and our objective is is to move from that status to the status whereby 
Maryam says, uh, good news, operation succeeded. Great news, the patient is, is re re recovering. And now uh, 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 Fatima uh, is happy because she's recovering and Hamza is even ha happier. This is when the project succeeds and the organization achieves a certain benefit they are looking for in a sustainable manner that leads to realizing the strategy. This is the important thing. What we are looking for is not just a project to provide deliverables anymore, what, as, as uh, uh, my brother Fahad started in his nice introduction. What we are looking for in Vision 2030 and in other visions of other countries is the impact, is the result, is the sustainability, is the, ca the capability to actually provide the needed benefit or, or service. Now, uh, how to move from this to that? Uh, usually we build a strategy and our strategy uh, means we are going to invest, invest to realize value. Now, what is value? Value is cost minus benefit. If, if you get me the benefit of, of this uh, uh, enhanced, uh, if you like, uh, uh, air quality, uh, lesser health problems and whatnot, and it costs us $10 billion dollars, and uh, then the, the uh, benefit financially from uh, people g going back to the area is $1 billion. It's, it's, it's not uh, sustainable. What we're looking for is value. Value meaning you can invest $10 billion as long as it gets you back $20 or $30 billion because everything has to go back to the, to the, to the uh, ba balance sheet. This is what is value with respect to board of directors, with respect to, to, to GMs, with respect to CEOs, even with in, 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 in the government, because we, we have to build systems that we can run without killing us, without, uh, without a budget that uh, does not allow us to, to sustain. Then in the portfolio management, we select the right investments that will realize this strategy, there is alignment and there is specific contribution that can be measured uh, that will provide the needed benefits at an acceptable cost so that we can achieve the strategy and the value we are looking for. And in order to do that, our organization is not accustomed to this type of new uh, uh, benefit or new, new process or new, new system they have to transform. They have to change from state A to state B. That, so uh, everywhere we do a new thing, there is a change that has to happen. And this change requires management because normally people resist change. So we have to factor in the change management and plan for it as part of our strategy realization. So we have to have a certain, you can call it a program or anything else, but we have to transform our operation. And then the project would provide the deliverables and capabilities. If you don't think holistically and don't look at the dimension of benefit, you just end with the project and you don't consider the change. And, and then the, the portfolio will not achieve the benefit and we will not have the value, but we already spent the money. You see the, the big difference here, okay? And of course, once we do all these, then the operator, the operation will realize sustainable benefits. So the whole idea is to have our operator move from status A to state B. We enable them with these deliverables and capabilities then, and we help them transform, then they will realize the benefits and over time, over an acceptable cost or budget, it will turn into value. And hence we can move from that status to the new status. And this will never happen by chance, it has to be planned. It has to be uh, managed uh, pr properly. Uh, so to re realize strategy, this mandates we focus on, on, on benefit. And here, I, I always insist, the project manager cannot be responsible on their own to manage the benefit. Why? The project manager who is successful, he, he moves after he delivers the plan to another plan, to another project. And sometimes, in the middle of the project, if his or her project are good, we move them to another project which is suffering, 
to bring them back on track. So they will not be there to run it, to operate it. This is not their role. This is the role of the business units, of the business as usual, BAU, or as they call it in the UK, or, or the role of the uh, operation. This is why in order for us to succeed, we cannot succeed in a silo. We have to, to integrate between strategy, portfolio, program, project, and operation, as we showed in the back slide. And we have to transform and empower operation to realize benefit. So in this respect, and I'll, I'll, I love that thing about PMOGA, and they are writing now in, a new standard. I'm one of the uh, reviewers of the standard, and they focus a lot on the integration uh, between operation and project, which is really beautiful. Uh, uh, they, they, they consider the PMO to, to be uh, customer-centric. Uh, they are successful if their client is successful. Who is their client? The operator is their, is their client. Hence, projects are there to serve the uh, uh, operator. They are not enemies. They are complementary. So who realizes the benefit? The operator or the project manager? I think it's obvious because Jad here comes and says, without business as usual, benefit will not be realized. And, and then Farid, our project director, says, with our projects, capabilities to realize benefit will not exist. We need two. It takes two to tango, which is another, another story I'm not covering here, here today. So why do we need benefits? What are benefits? Okay, It's not just dimensions, portfolio, program, project management. They are the rationale for the investment. They are the why. If it's public for taxpayers, if it's private for shareholders, funds, in change initiative, initiative and change initiatives means projects and, and programs that change things. So it is the rational, it is the why. And the benefit management model as per the APMG uh, managing benefit standard has uh, uh, seven domains, okay? And five phases, which we're gonna cover. I'm gonna focus on one of them, which, which is the second one, starting with the end in mind. Of course, we start by aligning benefit to strategy. And then the second one is start with the end in mind. I'm going to go back to this in a bit. Then the third is to utilize successful delivery method like project management, good program management, whether it is agile, waterfall, phase gate, what, or whatnot, integrated with performance management. And, and this is, a I'm just going to give a note here, is that many people or organizations try to identify the KPIs for benefit. And they try to invent new things. This is totally useless and not needed and will not get you anywhere and did not get any of them anywhere. What are the KPIs of benefits? They are the KPIs of your operator. They are the performance management KPIs of your business units. So if, if, if your KPI on serving uh, uh, your client is 80% and your objective is to get it to 90%, then the uh, initiatives to get you from this point to that point, this is what you measure. This is the benefit that you realize. It's about getting results from those who get the results, which are the, the operators. So it's not an invention. It's just looking at, but now one thing we can do when we consult on this, if the performance KPIs for the operator are not clear, or need some, some work, we can work on them and make this link identify which benefit maps to which uh, uh, performance indicator. Then we have managing ben benefit from a portfolio perspective because uh, this is where you have the business case. This is where you have a sponsor. This is, this is where uh, uh, governance starts with the end in mind. I'm gonna go back, back to that, okay? Uh, it does not start after we deliver a project uh, and they ask us, give us the benefit and we start to look for a benefit. Then you find anything and, uh, that you did and you call it the benefit. No, it starts in the very beginning before you start the project, before there is a project manager, okay? When a sponsor works, uh, probably with the investor, the board of directors, with the strategy people, identify what should be done to realize a certain strategy. This is where where we start uh, building a business case for each one of the initiatives we have. And also the business case is a totally different discipline that we'll cover later on. Then of course, we need to have governance 
uh, uh, nice thing is that uh, the, the standard for P3G project program portfolio governance uh, by P3G QA is very much aligned with the new standard of managing benefit. They refer to each other. Uh, we're going to cover the governance uh, and a beautiful topic, how corporate govern governance works with initiative governance. Uh, I think on September 11, inshallah, we'll have, we'll have, uh, you don't need to, to miss that. It's, it's important as a continuation to this topic uh, within this executive series. Uh, and then, of course, a value culture uh, overall. Now, I can speak a lot about each one, but this is not our topic. Our topic is the start with the end in mind. Before that, just to give an, an, an idea about the perspective of benefit. Look at these phases when you identify, select, define, execute, and operate. This is an investment life cycle. And the dimension, the Y dimension is the value. So if you look at the uh, project below, which we did not invest a lot in its definition because we were rushed out. We want to see deliverables, don't plan, don't think, don't just invest, do this hotel in this area, for example, or this residential building there, or I don't know what. So you, you rush things, you don't do a proper business case, you don't do proper portfolio selection, uh, you don't plan properly, rush into execution and who will suffer the operator now if the project which was poorly defined finished on time on budget according to quality it is c in terms of value and if not it is d in terms of value not not much difference whereas if you look at the proper upstairs the proper that was identified for the right cause the, for the right benefit uh, then selected properly with a good business case, sponsored properly, good governance on it, planned and defined properly, executed properly. Now, if it was it finishes on time, on budget, co according to quality, it is A. If not, it is B. But both A and B are on the high value uh, 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 zone. Meaning, I'll give you a, an example, which is, for example, the uh, uh, the airport in UK, the uh, the uh, terminal uh, um, terminal five, as I as I re recall, uh, Heathrow Airport. When when they opened it in the morning, they closed it in the afternoon because the ha package handling system and other systems failed. So the project was poorly implemented, but it was the right project. After nine months or a year, they fixed everything. And the terminal ran properly from years till now. It served millions of travel, travels. Uh, it brought a lot of income to the GDP and it's providing value in a sustainable manner. So this is the perspective of looking at only perfecting the project execution is the difference between A and C, okay? Uh, 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 A and C are, are both perfectly implemented projects, but one provides great value, one of is almost no value, versus poor project implementation, B and D. This is why we, ha we have to introduce the concept of benefit. And it is an organizational concept that comes before the project manager, before the project manager role is, is, is identified. And to overlap the five... Uh, 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 on the five phases, this is where we start to build the business case. We do the selection, we do the program management and transformation, implement the projects and go to business as usual. And to superimpose this on the life cycle, which we have identify and quantify in, in terms of benefit management life cycle, value and appraise, the plan, the realization and the review. So this is, in a nutshell, a quick explanation of, of the seven domains and the five uh, uh, phases in the life cycle. Now to go to our, our objective, start with the end in mind. And for this, I borrowed, um, is my sound clearer now? Okay. Somebody, I think, said my sound is not it, high. It's very clear, Dr. Saadi. Thank you. Thank you. And I borrowed this from one of my friends. Uh, Melview D from Australia. Uh, he had it in a, in a actually published it in a white paper that you can download. 
Uh, I can send you the link later on. Beautiful uh, paper on benefit and other topics. And uh, it helped us explain everything. So uh, usually you have a project that provides an output. Then we, you have to have capabilities for the operator to be able to, to run it, to implement it, to make use of it. Then you achieve certain outcomes. And of, after a period of time, after the project is closed, you have you, the operator will reap certain benefit, okay? And these benefits are always have KPIs from strategy, like increased revenue sale of X percent over Y years, something that you can measure. Uh, and this gets you to measure to measurable actual benefit, okay? So you, your current status was this blue one, and it became this orange one, which is better than before in a sustainable manner. Now, this is how the way we think, but the way to, to plan for it is, is totally different. We call this a service, we call it Rewire, where we utilize the strategy implementation roadmap from Strategy Implementation Institute. We're gonna probably have a, a webinar for that in early 2025. And we, rely, we utilize also the managing benefit and other frameworks in this Rewire. And in this Rewire, you don't think from right to left. You start to think and plan from right to left. You start with the end in mind. So in terms of your planning, what you actually do, okay, is uh, identify the strategy from the strategy. What are the measurable benefits you wish to be realized in a sustainable manner, then do re-engineering and imagine. Imagine what is the output or the status of your operator should be that if you have the status, you will be able to realize sustainable benefits over time. And once you imagine your status of your operator, now check, do an assessment of their current. You identify the target and you assess to know what you have today. And the difference is the change management you have to plan for. So you start to plan for the change of the operator. And this gets you to the needed or the missing capabilities that the the operator does not have and they need to have it for them to be able to perform better and in a sustainable manner on their own after we finish so you identify the capabilities and when we say capabilities they could be skills that require training they could be a process that requires to be developed or maybe uh, rewritten reinvented they could be a utility that is missing. They could be uh, funding that is required. It could be anything. So here you identify the capabilities. Then you go back and define the project and define the scope of work of your project. And you put that not in a project plan, in a business case to justify the investment, the investment in the utility, like the plant we started with, the invested in change management, the investment in, uh, uh, in the different capabilities or systems you need to have. And once you have this feasibly from a financial perspective, economic perspective, operational, strategic alignment, there are five aspects of a standard business case as per the British standard, which is widely used, by the way, in, in, in KSA. Uh, accordingly, then we uh, uh, provide this business case and to the board and try to get an acceptance. And once it is accepted... Business, the business uh, function that they should lead or like strategy should lead or... Uh, the performance management should lead. It's all an issue in an organization because no one like will take that steps and time. It's very difficult to do that integration. 
But ourselves, to be honest, we took this on our shoulder. So we made sure that integration happens between us, strategy, plus the uh, performance management. And the idea here is like how you embed change management. Uh, I think, shukran uh, al-Stad Ahmed, I think he saw that how we are like getting things from ADCAR. And here, like I would uh, yani, uh, give a shout out to uh, Athir Spey. She was one of the change management who worked with me on it. Uh, we worked really good in terms of pre-execution through the transition and uh, post the transition. So we cared about change management in that. So when we looked into strategy implementation as a maturity, we looked on all that thing, like as you mentioned, stakeholder, business model, value, track performance, employee engagement. And it wouldn't happen if the PMO did not take the step to st- like to be the one who's going to do the integration of the whole, like the value chain, which is a critical for any strategic implementation. So uh, I would say uh, this is a really good score. And I think we have a room to improve. Uh, and we know that there is things that now we're doing it better uh, and we're getting better even in to structure ourselves even within uh within like let's say our sector uh, as a strategy and portfolio sector you see there is a famous saying once you know how to do things right you cannot do them wrong yes <laughs> you cannot yes <laughs> you cannot. we learn and, yeah, and and i love one thing and i would like to highlight i believe one of the most important things there are frameworks lots of frameworks and maybe we got this framework, maybe there's another framework. And if you assess civil, I believe they will get, get even a high score on, on other frameworks. The important thing is that you did not stop at writing a good process. A good process is not good if it is not implemented. For it to be implemented, people have to accept it. People have to change from what they used to do to this new process so that the process can give you the result. So yes, it is all about the people as, as my friend Ahmad said, it's all about the people and to, to implement the process is not something light or easy. I've seen, I'm a judge and I've seen lots and lots of models, frameworks, PMOs, uh, applications and so on. There are numerous, most of these processes on paper or on screen, but they are not actually implemented. If they are not actually implemented, they will not yes. reap the result. If they don't get you the result, okay, you're not going to win an award. But more important, forget about the award. The award is, is something that will happen when you deserve it. It will come to you. The important thing is that you become better. You become better than yesterday. And tomorrow, better than today. And so on. So even civil, mashallah, they are number one, and they are still improving, which is the right thing, uh, right, right, right thing to do. So let me go uh, even quicker on on the other aspects. Of course, uh, uh, Antonio wrote uh, 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 beautiful uh, things about the the case study and about about civil, uh, and we included that. Now the second is managing benefit. Okay, and and you already know today because we explained a little bit about the the the, the framework, and you you find this benefits benefit realized in numbers, and uh, the assessment scheme that Stephen put speaks about ten different domains and areas, and we were able to find uh, detailed data on each one of them. But it's not, it was not only the data, it was interviewing the people and, and speaking to them and cross-referencing. Uh, and uh, uh, you find four of the 10 areas, they have five or five. Managing benefit, they have a full grade on, on four out of the 10 areas with some room to, 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 to improve and their uh, score is 84%. Of course, one of the best in the, in, in the world. And uh, it's all about the, the benefit. So I, I would say you implemented benefit in the PMO and you affected the organization 
there is the aspect of culture, culture which we will discuss later on. But I saw the culture change and you contaminated positively the whole organization to think about benefit and to start with the end in mind. I recall one of the uh, uh, data I looked at is that even the governor or the top leadership, whenever, you, you say it in, in your own yes. words. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, uh, I think this is on culture, so I don't want to go get there, but it's... Uh, no, 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 say it, say it, no problem. It's like now our top management, like when we talk about projects, it does not stop there. Like we, like it's not anymore about delivering a project and we are the good PMO to execute. It's about what happened after that? Like, what is, what is the benefit of that? What is the outcome? So we started hearing a lot about outcome and benefits. So we know that output is not anymore enough. And this is something I, I, I believe PMO is evolving to, that we always tend to have a department that it does a lot of things other than project management. You know what I mean, Victor? Like, to, we know a lot of PMO, like, they're doing project then. Anyone in the organization will give them something else to do, to do, but it's not going to be controlled. So I would say we have to take it on ourselves as a PMO to make that a change, which is we, in order for the PMO to evolve, we know we need to get into the strategic thinking to the, the thinking of the end of mind is about benefit. It's about outcome. It's not about output anymore. So no one cares about a project's finish. Honestly, it's a very important for any organization to understand that execution should be good, but in order to give value, even for your stakeholder on a culture wise, they need to see that value that you help them to get there. So even business function, even if they're going to do it, they want your help to do it too, because sometimes it's not that easy, but on managing benefits and today how we are like, quantifying things like as you as as seen here in the slides it's i think i would second you when you when you said doctor it's your operational kpi it's thing that you have because if you cannot measure it you cannot manage it so you have to have that baseline so your baseline always comes from things in history like from a year before or even further if it's something new then we're talking about a benchmark best practices, whatever is there, you will just set it and you will probably say, first year is just a, to, a, to baseline it. But usually it comes from your operation. And those KPIs, it's the only issue with them is that measuring those benefits, it has a lead time. It will take you time. So I think I saw one of the questions. I, I know that it's not a question time, but who's controlling or who's managing the benefits? I think this is something can be tailored to any organization. Like you, you, like people would think it's a multiple people that get into benefit. Benefit is not something easy. Benefit is about projects. Benefit is about strategy. Benefit is about performance management. So there is multiple and business function as you know, like definitely is something important too. But like I can say, I, I, and change management, which is people and a lot of things into it too. So there is so many things in it, but orchestrating those whole value chain I think it's the key in order for you to get benefit realization. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Saadi, Dr. Yes. Saadi, salam. Well, I was planning all the time to wait until the end. And I, I was planning to participate. Like, mashallah, my Ustad Faisal, I could not stop. I was waiting for him to, to, to stop. Then I wanted to say something. I need to, to, to participate with it, if you allow me, Dr. Saadi. Of course, Dr. Khaled. And oh, I think I, I think, uh, Stad Faisal, you raise up the standard high. Uh, and I, what I could say, if anyone around the world, he wants to see 2030 vision implemented in the field, he could, you have your the role model to present. Uh, <laughs> uh, things, uh, you're, you're looking behind the scene. You're looking behind, to, to, people are looking to, to implement and whatever you're going to, what, what you did previously, you uh, built with, 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 you injected the benefits was not a luxury. No, it's a, one of the main pillars when your infrastructure uh, a PMO. I think uh, the majority of the people in the most industries, they focus on executing the and get the, the credit of implementing something. 
but uh, few few people they uh, يعني focus on the benefits to be able to be a lesson learner. I think what you did uh, as a sobel, uh, it's a lesson learner to درس في الجامعات. Uh, people if they want to do it right as a PMO, this is my personal opinion. They should have they should have looked at the whole picture, including uh, uh, managing the benefits. Yes. And if you execute and if you don't if you don't put the lesson learned or show the actual benefits what was behind the projects, على فكرة each project had different benefits. Hundred percent. If you don't document this, and you don't if you don't put it in your manual as a pillar uh, for, for the uh, managing the benefits, I think we're not moving. It's a one man show. Had كون لا يعني. إذا الأستاذ فيصل مشي people they're not going to do but whatever you did whatever you did طالما أخذت ال accreditation وال والجائزة أعتقد إنه you're up the standard I would like to congratulate سبل على على ال role models ال management اللي موجودين على team building اللي موجود ترى أنا أنا been through team buildings لو ما كان في teams behind it will never happen <laughs> absolutely i cannot yeah, agree more that's why i was trying to يعني, to stop until the end سامحني دكتور سعدي والله i could not stop لا اخ اخ عزيز بالعكس كان thank you thank you دكتور سعدي thank you استاذ فيصل وش هو good luck ان شاء الله واعتقد this is the first step of your success نتوقع 2024 you will amaze us with something new والله يجزاك خير ان شاء الله باذن الله وان شاء الله نكون عند ظنكم دكتور by the way, you both belong to the same ministry, the Ministry of, of Transportation and, and Logistics, whether Correct. Saudi airline or, or, or civil. Okay, so you are, uh, you are within this, the same uh, uh, ecosystem. And uh, Dr. Khalid and Akh Fahad, maybe not everybody knows them very well, but they've been managing teams of tens of thousands of people Mashallah. across the globe working in Saudi airline in terms of all types of aviation and management and leadership training from 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 A to Z. So this is their Mashallah. life. You're talking you're talking to people who are يعني مش ولاد مبارح people who, who who already seen all and this is what they do and 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 their life. This is why. أنا أثمن كلمة دكتور خالد. I really see it highly valuable coming from one of the major experts in the domain. Thank you. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you, عزيزي. طيب. Of course, Stephen Jenner gave his his two cents about 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 it, closing the strategy execution gap, which he speaks a lot about it. يعني اليوم lots of organizations they build strategy but to execute it there is a big big gap big valley it has to have a solid large bridge to go from just talking to actually implementing what you talked about not implementing 100% it does not happen happen easily or chance now to add car uh, again uh, which we spoke about very quickly. And this score, if you see, we did not do any even editing on the only. We just copycatted ProSci results, uh, which and you got 84%, which is very, very high as, as well in terms of change management. Okay, and this is Ahmed's uh, quote about sail and water and uncharted and readiness. Then the, the one about uh, about governance, okay? Uh, as the assessment on governance, I will tell you, it was a little bit complex. Uh, the the standard is not very old, but the the uh, where it came from is very old, implemented in many uh, public organizations around around the world, uh, and uh, uh, getting the the answers to it, and you you got seventy nine percent. Amazingly, five fifty percent, you got a full score. And there are some some rooms to 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 improve uh, inside there, and to get a seventy nine or or like eighty percent on a new standard that you never saw before, Kamen Manu and this is Ross Garland and what he 
so about, about it. Then the portfolio management. And one thing I would like to, to state is that uh, civil, when we did the assessment, you did not have a standard for portfolio management, but portfolio management was implemented as, as, a, as a whole. Uh, uh, yani you did portfolio management, whereas, but you did not have a special standard for portfolio management. Others do have a standard, but they don't implement it. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is why at the end, I, I usually tell people you should walk the talk. My, my end advice to civil was you should talk the walk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the 75% they got uh, could be easily 90 or 95% if they just assembled what they're doing and called it the standard in civil for portfolio management, then we would have answers to 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 the to, to the uh, rest of them, which is anyway not not uh, something easy or or light. Of course, Dr. Ricardo uh, provided his his contribution there. And in terms of knowledge management, now knowledge management, this is a big story. Uh, it has a standard uh, by Douglas Widener, the chairman of knowledge management in Washington. And my partner, Dr. Mustafa Hafizullah, is the accredited guy. He did the, the assessment. And I will tell you, when we talk about knowledge management, this is like a black hole in, in, in our whole Z area or zone. Very, very few organizations understand what they think knowledge management is merely lessons learned and, and archived. No. First, it is a cultural thing, a culture of preserving the knowledge in the organization, of recycling the knowledge in the organization, of looking for repeatable knowledge in the organization, of passing the knowledge from one person to the other in the organization. And in these aspects, uh, civil so did uh, very well. I believe once you have the standard look at it, also this can be uh, enhanced substantially. And then the last thing, which is about integration integration between operations and, and, and projects. Uh, and you had lots of frameworks on uh, beautiful ones on that and, and readings and the integrated life cycle management framework, you got a 68%. Per, perhaps a couple of notions were not uh, there, but I think again, walk the talk, talk the walk, okay? And, and you, you will get there. So the overall uh, re result, my, my final advice is to those who wish to imitate Sybil and have their PMO uh, uh, apply for an award, you need to have your executive support with you. The PMO at Sybil did not succeed because they are working alone as a silo on their own. No, not at all. They succeeded because they were accepted by the organization. And this is a major thing for a PMO to succeed. They were accepted because they are contributing value to the organization. And once the different units and the top management started to realize more and more the value they are providing, they became just like any, any other unit in, in the organization that is indispensable. I'll give you a, a very simple test for your PMO anywhere in the world. If there is a budget cut, what would the CEO and the board director, what is the first department or business unit, would they start to close? I will give you a hint. Okay, In many, many, many cases, it is the PMO. Why? because they did, do not understand the value of the PMO or the PMO did not work to pro provide the value that, that is required. Whereas at Sybil, if there is a budget, it is not going to be to the PMO because the PMO is providing value. It is needed, wanted, accepted, respected by every other business unit and by the top management. So it's not Aladdin's lamp, okay? Shubek, look back, and you win an award. It's smart and hard work, and you have to get the alliance and support of your uh, CEO. And the the end result came to be uh, seventy eight uh, uh, percent, which is uh, quite high on on all these uh, different 
standards. Of course, a last quote by Americo who did a full review on the case. Uh, not only that, Americo spoke about we, we need to, to do more about this uh, way of standard or, or, or assessment. And the end result, we came to 10 conclusions that you have to win. You have to manage benefits, achieve sustainable impact. You have to, to be a drive as a PMO for strategy implementation, leading to real actual realization. You have to transform to become a service provider for organizational excellence. And I love the, the note by Faisal ab, ab, about this, about uh, your role to serve the organization and the business unit. Listen, a winning PMO is not a PMO that says not me when they are requested to provide support or help. Advance the transformation and change management. Even now, Prosai, you can ask Ahmed, the expert amongst us, would, would state that uh, right now, their decision and change management cannot be separated from the, the PMO and, and organization and project management. You have to become a learning organization, master knowledge management. You have to break silo, enhance collaboration, integrate strategy business unit and the PMO. You, you have to act as a front runner for cultural evolution. You need to fix your governance inside and outside the PMO. And uh, you need to focus on delivery performance in a customer value centric portfolio. So everything you do, you need to look at what is good for your customer. That will be good for you. And, and listen, the customer of the PMO could be inside the organization and could be outside the organization. And last thing that we realized across the world, localization, engaging stakeholders across the life cycle. Saudi Arabia has localization as an important uh, thing in terms of the uh, 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 things that lead to Vision 2030. And this has been done all by local Saudi hands within civil themselves, not an outside consultant did that for them. And that made that this was a main differentiator, by the way, that the, the judges will realize all the time. And we came up with a small self-assessment around these 10 factors that a, a, an organization can give a score from one to five. We, we don't have it at all versus we have it fully. Uh, my advice is that you take this sheet of paper and get around five people, five people working inside the PMO, leading the PMO, client of the PMO, maybe vendor, okay? Do a 360 degree, each one fill it alone, then get their average, okay? And, and that would tell you, uh, if your score is less than 40, don't apply now over 50, don't apply, wait until you, you achieve the 40% score. This means it will give you a, a high level holistic identification on the areas that you need to improve and work on yourself. Whether you do it internally, hire external consultant, this is up to you. The important thing is that if you want to, to win, you have to climb up the mountain. How hard it is, you have to do, do it. You have to do the right things and you have to do things right. And uh, I think uh, already Mustafa shared the, the link for the, uh, the, the uh, case study. So uh, by that, I finished the presentation, but not the discussion. Uh, let's, let's look at the questions uh, uh, and see what we can. I, I did not read any questions, sorry, while I'm, I'm, I did not have the chat in front of me. So let's look at them. And uh, Faisal, feel free to, to pick a question and answer it. Imkan, a few questions can, in best practice, who should be responsible to realize the benefits? Uh, talk uh, who, is who is responsible to realize uh, to, uh, the benefits so we're talking here, here just make sure that I put the question in a good yes and best practice who should uh, who should be responsible to realize the benefits okay now I can tell you the answer from the standard from yes. the best yes and Faisal can tell you the answer from the practical part Exactly. Okay, let me start. Now the standard tells you, you have, you have to identify 
what we call as a benefit owner. And the benefit owner is always from the operation side. Okay, why? You know, there are temporary and permanent structures. A temporary structure, he goes away to do something else. How can they be responsible to realize benefit, which has to have you there? So if, if my benefit was, instead of delivering the parcel in five days, to deliver it in one day, okay, it has to be owned by those who deliver the parcels. Yani not by project managers, by operators. So you have to identify the benefit owner and this benefit owner has to work with the sponsor early enough when, while we're writing the business case. And we introduce also a change manager, okay? To understand the situation of the benefit owner, where he is or she, or where they want to, where they need to become, assess the gap, build their plan, include it, along with whatever capabilities missing, then we can have a case study if approved, we assign a project manager to implement. You see what we spoke about before, the rewire, the start with the end in mind, thinking from right to left, in terms of planning, then you plan, you, you execute left to right. You don't plan left to right, okay? So uh, when we talk about benefit, there are multiple roles. It is not uh, something that can be done. Uh, if, if Superman, you hire Superman, it will not do for you, okay? The organization has to be the Superman. Not the system has to be the Superman. It's not a one-man show. It's a collaboration of multiple roles that need to be understood. Need, uh, everybody would know their role, how to collaborate and work with each other properly. Then meet me after two years after you deliver the, deliver the new project facility, the, the training, the handover, the change management, and let us see and uh, assess and measure this benefit owner how much uh, uh, he he was able to realize out of the benefit from the various beneficiaries. Faisal, would you like to give it a practical? Yes, I'll I'll give a, a practical and something that it uh, can uh, it will uh, elaborate on how things are really in the beginning. It's so simple and it's, it's really small. Uh, when we started benefit, we only started not even from business cases we started into the program management and initiative management so for every initiative we try to put some kpis so those initiatives cannot be executed just uh in terms of a project and timeline and budget no we put specific kpis like three to four like depends on what this initiative should deliver and we put those kpis as of the uh, the benefit for it that was a step we took i think 2021 or early 2022 where it's we're trying to tap on those benefits so we're trying to tell people initiatives is not about project execution and that's it you have to deliver a really good capability that in order and generate something out of it in order to do the transformation so in reality like who like at that time well it was a business function and as you can Sahar mentioned the PMO and SMO, because we were working all together, we have committees. So in this committee, the operation team, the business function, they usually come and give us that update. But years after years, like now we evolve. Now we have a function for benefits. Like there is a whole section for it. I agree with Dr. Saadi. It's the business function, the operation. They are the one who really uh, responsible to deliver it. But like, if we put it in two ways, like accountability and responsibilities, accountability with the business, yes. Responsibility is with the benefit management team. Like they need to drive that. They need to push. They need to be there. They need to show the reviews. They need to show it to them back. Uh, they need to have a platform maybe. Like if the uh, executive team, stakeholder, they like that, they will even push that further. So they will help you in order to get power. So Today, in SPL, we do have a special report for benefits. And it's a, there is a benefit function. But if you talk to me like two, like 
two years ago, it was a totally different. So this is why you can start simple. We can start within KPI operation and bundle them within under every initiative or for now, the way that we're doing it, for every business case, we have a benefit uh, field that a business, when they raise their business case, they want the budget, all that thing, they should put what this is going to get us back. We need to know our ROI. And this is something really good today. So we have it uh, in practice in a system, as Dr. Khad mentioned, if I leave, if anyone leaves from strategy, from PMO, from performance management, the cycle is there. The, uh, the, the value that we put, the, the value chain that we built, it's going to be sustainable. People moving in and out, it's just uh, they will do the job. Uh, there is no effect and there is no silos and there is no one man show, which is very important for me uh, in order to build a really sustainable business. And with the thinking of the end of my end of mind uh, like always uh, as a strategic point to get to okay there's another question we take it on close because we exceeded the time okay uh, <laughs> yeah but before that uh, when you're talking I'm, I'm thinking about something uh, important because you mentioned several times or you implied the transition in the PMO yani you did not just start open the PMO and everything is mature. You are at that level. You started certain places. You started simple. You you earned uh, rapport and you earned collaboration and open channels. Some people see the value. Some people would start to collaborate. Maybe not all all business units in the beginning. Until you 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 have your pilot, even if you don't call it a pilot, but you have a certain success. And this will, will raise the attention to more people, to more business units wanting to collab col collaborate and, and work with you and so on until it becomes the not the, the, the trend or, or the new uh, system. Uh, so so you, you have to start somewhere. And here there is, uh, there is uh, uh, a question about how do you get your decisions right, I, I believe. Nobody can get their decision right on everything from the first time. We use all of our experience and knowledge and discuss and start somewhere and maybe we make the wrong decision. But it is not that much wrong because if we know how to make decisions, as soon as you make certain steps, you start to correct. Okay? You immediately collect the lessons learned and you think where where we did we missed where what is the thing we do, we are not able to see in the beginning because nobody sees all all the details from when you are in the parachute you don't see everything downstairs <laughs> the, the more you go downstairs the more you see details of the terrain okay uh, so so once you start to work you enhance your decision uh, uh, I'm I'm not looking for the best decision in the beginning. I'm looking for the best decision at the end. After we achieve years and years of working, collaborating, and maturity together, then we can have we can reach a point of excellence where most of our decisions are the right decisions, whether strategic or tactical or operational, from the first time. It is not a pill you take, it is not a Din's lamp. It's a lot of hard, smart work. It is making mistakes and learning from these mistakes and correcting them rather than killing the one who makes the mistake. Look at it as an opportunity to learn so that you can become a learning organization. By this, you start to implement knowledge management as part of your culture. And I believe the PMO can be an excellent driver for that one last note i have in mind about maturity i've never ever seen a pmo with very high maturity in a low performing organization it does not happen you do not mature in a silo we mature together yani mumkin uh, post, uh, uh, the pmo is at a certain level let's say three the organization two because he has to pull it okay 
uh, maybe there are four organizations, three. It cannot happen that, that a PMO has a five maturity and the organization is two. It will never happen. Why? Because the PMO by itself, what is the success of the PMO? It is the success of those who, whom the PMO are serving. Projects and business units and operation. Okay, so what I would like to end is that we succeed together. We cannot succeed on in a silo on our own. This is a main factor of winning PMOs. What do you like to, to end, Faisal? Uh, wallahi, I think you ended up well with a very interesting topic that organizational work, uh, it's a collaborative. Uh, it's always, you, we need to be proactive into things sometime because it's the only way to help each other. Like Because people always rely on others to do it. For a PMO, if you can bring value, if you will, you, if we want to continue an organization where they don't think of you as the first one to close uh, as a department to shut you down without a project, is to bring that value very clear, build on the quick wins. Today, we're asked to be a directive mode PMO, not because of uh, we just won the award, because of the professional work that we put and the proactiveness that, that we do. We're asked to be a directive. This is the first time for me to be an organization where I transfer from a support to control to a directive mode. Uh, and if you ask me this question in 2022, uh, talking about decision and right or, or right decision, I would tell you I will never know. But I'm making a lot of decisions, and we're making a lot of mistakes with that too. But we're we're like failing forward, which is very important to us to fail forward. Like when we fail. We will learn something. This is how we pick up and do something better. It's the same as benefit management. We started with one way, then I ended up with a different way. In 2022, we were in the award as well, in the PMO Global Alliance Award, but we did not win it even against Saudi. Uh, in 2023, we made it. Why? Because we knew that we need to talk the walk part of it. And the other part is that we changed things. We improved. So... Uh, Wishing you all the best of luck. Uh, uh, you guys probably know my LinkedIn. If anyone knows, like they can search by name, my name. Uh, I'm willing to help anyone that who works on PMO, uh, strategic execution, performance management. Uh, we're always here to help. Uh, not just for Saudis, is even for non-Saudis. So, like, we used to be like we to be driven with the, the vision and 2030, but this is a knowledge that we have to share it on the whole uh, network, on all the, the project management network, is to elevate our project management. Uh, so let's do that. And uh, I'm, I'm willing and hoping to be always uh, contributing to this and giving as much as I can uh, to be uh, along among really uh, an experts like Dr. Saadi and uh, Dr. Khalid and the other uh, even participants. Appreciate it. I see big names that I know. So appreciate that you all uh, allowed me to be here, to listen to me. And uh, hopefully at one day we will meet. Uh, uh, Faisal, uh, we, we, are, we, are to, we are together. We are one team. Okay. We are one of you. You are one of us. Okay. Uh, you, what you did, we learned from you. And our role is just to be a relay to convey this 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 knowledge inshallah uh, before thank you very much my friend my dear uh, before we finish this is the pdu you can claim 1.5 pdus against this code uh, here and if mustafa you can go on to the next announcement before we we close yes of uh, course dr saadi if you would allow me uh, honestly Please. uh uh, yani this is for the first time that we yani, exceeded. Uh, we're supposed to be finishing by 9.30, and now we're uh, 10 minutes uh, above that. But uh, uh, yani, on behalf of all the participants, uh, I would like to thank you, Dr. Saadi and Mr. Faisal Arfaj, yani, for your uh, knowledge sharing experience and deep insight on imagine benefits in concept and applications. Uh, and uh, yani, uh, Dr. Khalid Bawazir also for the beautiful words that he mentioned. It's actually coming from the heart, uh, Dr. Uh, Khaled, maybe he said, uh, and uh, what we all uh, uh, feel about uh, Mr. Faisal and uh, his experience. 
اور انجينير فيصل ثانك يو فيري ماتش ابريشيت يعطيكم العافيه مصطفى اي وود لايك تو اولسو اناونس سمثينج فور ذوس هو ار انتريستد تو ريزيرف ذير سيتس فور وان تايم اونلي ورك شوب اون مانجمنت بينيفيتس ذس ويل بي بريزنتد باي دكتور سعدي هيمسلف انكلودينج سيتينج فور ذا مانجمنت بينيفيتس اي بي ام جي اكريديتد اند فاونديشن اكزام يس بليز شير ويز اس مصطفى Uh, the registration for the for the upcoming uh, course that will be taken inshallah from the 13th until the 15th of october in riyadh and uh, for our participants who are interested they can uh, just uh, uh, follow the registration barcode and register for their own uh, course uh, inshallah dr sadi thank you i think a last announcement about the upcoming webinars there are three more executive webinars Can you share the screen, the next slide, please? Okay, the the next one, which is clearer. Yes, we are delivering three more webinars within the executive webinar series on very interesting topics, such as governance and triple B and organization excellence. And uh, you can see, uh, Mustafa, you already put, you shared it, right? I think I'm still, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I can see it right can now. Can you yeah. see it? Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's very clear. Thank you, Mustafa. My so pleasure. this will be the, our next uh, webinars, inshallah. This is on September 11. True. That will be on the September 11. And the next one? The next one will be Realizing Visions on the September 18th. Yes, on the public-private partnership. Indeed. And the last one, yeah. The last one on the Organization Excellence Manifesto, that will be, inshallah, on the October 2nd. You will share it, uh, Mustafa, in the chat, right? Yes, and as well in the email that I'll be sending to all as a follow-up tomorrow, inshallah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining and engaging and staying with us uh, so late. Uh, inshallah, looking forward to seeing you on the 11th of September for the upcoming webinar. Until then, stay safe and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all and wish you a good night. See you soon. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.